Hi, I'm Alticate and I'm gonna teach you how to play StarCraft 2. If you're new to this series, you'll find a link to the first episode in the description below. This episode is all about units. Units are the tools you use to defeat your opponent, so it's important to know how they work. We'll start from the top, so let's talk about selection. Before you can issue orders to a unit, you must first select it. Only the units you have currently selected can be given orders. There are several ways to select a unit. The most basic one is to move your mouse cursor over the unit and click the left mouse button. Usually though, it's more efficient to use a select box. To make a select box, click and hold the left mouse button. Then drag your mouse cursor to the opposite corner of the box you want to make. You'll see the select box form a green rectangle. Once it's the size you want, release the left mouse button to select every unit inside the select box. You can select structures the same way, but if there are both units and structures inside the select box, only units will be selected. Most of the time, you'll be using select boxes, even when selecting single units. When you're a beginner, you can afford to take your time, but as you improve, try to make select boxes no larger than they must be. If you have some downtime in a game, take the opportunity to practice selecting units faster and faster. This will improve your mouse precision over time. Another way to quickly select large groups of units is to double click. When you double click a unit, you will select all units of the same type on the screen. So in this case, if I double click a marine, I'll select all of the marines. If I double click a marauder, I'll select all of the marauders. You can also hold the control key and click a unit to get the same effect. Normally, making a new selection will remove your current selection, but if you want to add units to your selection, you can hold the shift key while selecting the new units. While holding the shift key, you can make select boxes, or you can double click, or even hold the control key as well and click to select groups of units. At the bottom of the screen, the units you have selected are shown. Each little icon displayed here represents a unit you have currently selected. If you click the left mouse button on one of these icons, you'll select that single unit. If you want to remove a unit from your selection, you can hold the shift key and click the unit's icon. You can also do the same by holding shift and clicking a unit on the map. And you can use the control key here as well. Hold control and click an icon to remove everything except that type of unit from your selection or hold shift and control to remove all units of a certain type from the selection. Finally, there's control groups. These are incredibly useful as they allow you to save a selection and then later bring it back in an instant, wherever the units are, by pressing a keyboard key. To create a control group, make your selection, then hold the control key and hit any number key from 0 to 9. Keep in mind that you need to use the number keys on top of the keyboard not the numbers on the numpad. Once you have created a control group, you will see it near the bottom of the screen. The control group displays a unit from the selected group along with a number representing how many units are in the control group. When you hit the number key on the keyboard, all these units will be instantly selected. If you hit the number key twice in rapid succession, you'll also center the game camera on their location. When you create a control group using the same number key, you will replace the old control group. However, there is a way to add units to an existing control group. First, select the units you want to add to the control group. Then, hold the shift key and press the number key. Your control group now contains all of the units you have added to it. Keep in mind that adding units to a control group this way doesn't select the existing control group. You must hit the number key again to select it. Now let's talk about the units you have selected. We'll start with the SCV over here. At the bottom of the screen you can see the information panel and the command card. The information panel shows the name of the unit, in this case SCV. Beneath the name you can see how many enemy units this unit has killed. In the case of this lowly SCV, he's unlikely to ever taste blood. The rank shown below is purely for flavor. A unit will gain higher rank if it scores multiple kills but the rank has no bearing on gameplay. The unit does not become stronger by increasing its rank. Below the rank, you see two icons that show the level of your current upgrades affecting this unit. Right now, we have no upgrades, so the number says zero on both accounts. I'll show you what it might look like later on in the game. 
This tank has level 2 vehicle plating and level 3 vehicle weapons. Hovering over these icons will show you more information about the unit's attributes. This marine has no armor, meaning that any attack that hits it will deal full damage. Later on in the game, infantry armor upgrades can increase the marine's resistance to damage. You can also see that the marine's move speed is 2.25. This will make more sense to you as your familiarity with the game improves, but for now, know that you can compare units' move speeds to figure out who's faster. This SCV, for example, has a move speed of 2.81. That means it'll outrun a marine if the two chase each other. If you look at the weapon icon, you'll see that the marine does 6 damage with each attack. It has a range of 5 and a weapon speed of 0.86. The marine will attack every 0.86 seconds, doing 6 damage with each hit. Range 5 is about this far. Just keep in mind that there are plenty of units out there with longer range than the marine which is important in some situations. Finally, the weapon icon says that the marine can target both air and ground units. If you look at the marauder, you'll see that it can only target ground units. That's bad news if the marauder runs across an air unit such as this banshee. Since the marauder can't attack the banshee, it has to run away. Fortunately, these marines can target air units, so the marauder lives to fight another day. To the left, you see a wireframe image of the unit. The only thing you need to know here is that green means that the unit is healthy. If the unit is injured, it will first turn yellow, then orange, and eventually red. Below the wireframe, you can see the life of the unit. The more life it has, the more damage a unit can sustain before it's destroyed. Cheap units like Marines don't have a lot of life, while big, expensive units like the Thor here have life in spades. Between the information panel and the command card is a portrait of a unit. This is mostly for fun, but you can click the portrait to center the game camera on the unit, in case you're not sure where it went. Click and hold the left mouse button on the portrait to temporarily lock the game camera on the unit as it moves. Then there's the command card. Initially, the game settings will show you a simplified command card with only the most important information. If you want to see every option available to your units, you must change this setting. The top row shows commands related to movement. Each icon also shows you the hotkey on the keyboard that will activate this command. If I had legal power to force you to learn these hotkeys, I would. Learning them is easy though. What you do is, every time you want to issue an order, if you don't know the hotkey already, you look over at the command card, find the hotkey and use it. If you're diligent about this, you'll have the hotkeys memorized in no time. First up, there's the move command. When you issue a move command, your selected units will move towards that location by the fastest possible route they're aware of. Clicking the right mouse button on the empty ground will default to the move command. Since your units ignore even enemy fire while moving, it's an efficient way to get your units to a specific spot on the map. Next, we have the stop command. It's simple. You hit the S key and your selected units will cease doing whatever they're doing. There are many applications for the stop command, but the most basic one is to stop your own units from doing something dumb. Future episodes will explain more advanced uses of the stop command. The hold position command is a lot like the stop command. When you hit the H key, your selected units will halt at their current location. Here's the difference though. A unit that's been issued a hold position command will not move for any reason. Normally, a unit will move to attack units nearby that are outside of its range. Or if it's attacked by a unit it cannot target, it will retreat. A unit issued a hold position command will do nothing, even if it kills it. As you improve at StarCraft, you will find situations in which this is incredibly useful. The patrol command is like a move command, except that it will create a patrol route for the unit. When you hit the P key and target a location on the map, your unit will start moving back and forth between its current position and the target position. It will keep doing this indefinitely. If your unit runs into enemies along its patrol route, it will move to attack them. Finally, there's the attack command. If you hit the A key and then target a unit, your selected units will move towards that unit and attack it, even if it's a friendly unit. More importantly, 
and I cannot stress how critical this is. Hitting the A key and targeting the ground will issue an attack move command. Your units will move towards the targeted location, stopping to attack enemy units along their path. So why is this so important? Well, I'll show you. Here are two groups of 12 marines each. The ones on the bottom belong to me. The ones at the top belong to my enemy. If I want to attack them, I'll hit the A key and then make sure to target the ground near the enemy units. My units will move forward, then attack as soon as they're within range. Since the enemy units are standing still, they will begin attacking as soon as my units are within range. The battle's a draw. Given equal forces, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but you'll both lose roughly the same amount of units. Now let's see what happens if I use the move command to move up to the enemy and attack them. My units won't fire until they've reached the target of their move command. Meanwhile, the enemy opens fire as soon as my units come within range. The result is far more one-sided. In this third scenario, I order my marines to focus their fire on a single marine at a time. You'll see that the result is roughly the same as when I attack move and let the computer manage my units. Actually, I end up doing slightly worse. StarCraft II units are possessed of a powerful artificial intelligence that will automatically prioritize and target enemy units. There are some pitfalls to the attack move command, but if you're a new player, you will want to almost exclusively use attack move. As you gain experience, you will learn when it's useful to eschew attack move. But for now, use the attack move command when you're attacking or when moving your units through unknown territory. Use the move command only when you're running away from fights. In addition to the five commands dealing with movement, most units have commands unique to the unit, such as spells, abilities, or specialized commands. You'll learn more about these in the episodes going over the three races and their units. Units will keep doing what they've been told to do, even if you no longer have them selected. If you select a unit and issue a new command, that unit will cease doing whatever it was doing and carry out your new command. You can also queue commands by holding the shift key while issuing additional commands. If you do so, the unit will wait to carry out the new orders until it's completed its existing orders. For example, you can tell this SCV to move to the bottom right starting location, then move to the top right starting location. The SCV will reach its first destination, then turn around and start towards its second destination. Lastly, just above the minimap you'll find two icons. One of these is the Idle Workers icon, which I'll go over in my economy episode. The second is the Army icon. The number above this icon represents the number of fighting units you have on the map. Hitting the F2 key will select your entire army. Hitting the key twice in rapid succession will center the game camera on the location where your army has its largest presence. That's it for now. Next time I'll give you an overview of structures, how to build them and what they can do for you. Thanks so much for watching and let me know what you think of the video in the comments below.